Hello, how are you doing? My name is Vera and welcome to my Stitching Corner. I'm really excited today because I will uh, get to share with you a new project uh, that is a full coverage. Um, you might have seen it before because I was sharing it uh, both on Instagram as well as my um, uh, stitching diaries, but I thought let's actually stitch on it together. So the project that I'm talking about is called York. It is um, a fine art painting by Louise Rayner, I think, um, and uh, it's charted by Golden Kite. So not a heaven and earth designs, but Golden Kite. Um, if I'm not mistaken, them from Sweden. They're definitely somewhere from Scandinavia. I think it's from Sweden. And I am working on this. So I thought, how about we get introduced to this, to this work, to this project? I'll um, have the opportunity to talk a little bit more in detail about what I've been um, uh, experiencing of this so far because it's a little bit different than a heaven and earth designs uh, but I also think that every single project is different like every project has its own unique um, unique uh, faces to it so yeah how do, what do you think about that um, and because it's not a really really large project I don't think it's going to be going on as a stitch with me for a really long time um, it's just 33,000 stitches so I think I will finish it eventually but until I'm done with it, uh, you'll get to see it on a Stitch With Me rotation. So let's talk a little bit about the project. So the project comes from Golden Kite. Um, so I bought the uh, PDF version online. Now this project actually comes in two different sizes. So they offer it in a standard or regular. I don't remember exactly the wording, but you'll be able to see uh, a small version or a regular version or a normal version, something like that. And I got the small one, so you can see in the title it says small. So uh, because it's a small one, they shrunk it all the way to just 33,000 stitches. And um, what they uh, shrunk it to is 150 stitches uh, wide and 220 stitches high. So it's relatively small. Um, yet, in spite of that, it still has 170 colors, 176 colors. Um, which um, made, are made out of 96 solid colors um, and 80 of them are blends of those solid colors. So that's how they calculate how many colors. So basically there's 176 symbols in here, um, but the threads do repeat in different blends, if that makes sense. Now, just for comparison, the standard version is 680 stitches wide and 997 stitches high. So for all intents and purposes, um, it can be considered as a super size because anything that is nearing to that 1000 mark um, is like a super sized uh, chart. And that is actually 677,960 stitches. So you can imagine how, how much larger that is and how much more detail you can get from that uh, standard version, which um, if it was a heaven and earth designs, it would have been considered as a supersized uh, chart. Uh, and then with that size and the detail also come comes uh, a couple more um, uh, symbols. So 200 colors, um, 140 of them, 114, sorry, are solid and 86 are blends of those solid colors. So now that I got this a little bit out of the way, um, hopefully that gave you a little bit of a context of what this chart is like and what this uh, piece is like. I think in the um, in the editing phase, I'll add a color version of this because um, there's not much you can see. But um, that's kind of the resolution that I would get. It's like this really murky, blurry, blurry image which for some reason really appealed to me. <laughs> and I thought, well, like, I don't mind that it's blurry and it's just 33,000 stitches, so that's not too bad. Um, I do have it on the phone and I use Pattern Keeper. Now, if you've never used Golden Kite, just like me, this is my first time, um, and you're wondering how it's working on Pattern Keeper, everything is great. So here's the, oh, sorry for the reflection. So here's the mock-up. Um, as you can see, if you look from quite uh, quite a distance, you do get to understand the details. Uh, but if you zoom in and you're stitching, it's pretty pixelated. Um, so 
you know, just, just be mindful of, of what it is. But if you squint and you stand back, um, it's pretty, like, you can really make out uh, what the picture is like. So this is the mock-up that I generated in Pattern Keeper. So let me just uh, actually open up the chart. And here is my progress so far, which is uh, 3920, um, standing at 11.88%. And I'm not sure if you can see those very faint uh, gray lines, uh, but there are nine pages in total for this chart. Let me see how big those pages are because oh, the gray lines disappeared, but I remember where that was. So they're about 55 stitches wide and 70 70 something stitches high. So I think it's a little bit smaller than a Heaven and Earth design page. Um, so their pages are a little bit different. And if you're wondering how the uh, blended colors work in here, it's just the same as if it would have been a regular color. So let me just, that's a solid color. I'm just clicking and hoping to land on a blended color. So for instance, this um, inverted fork-like shape um, which is composed out of 30, 32, and 38, 63. Um, and the symbol itself, it looks like as if it has a gradation to it. So, you know, it starts with one color and then ends up in another color. That's how they symbolize it. Uh, but then once I mark it off, I think it makes an average of those two colors together. So it's not like you see like waves, <laughs> like wavy pixels. Uh, so yeah, like no, no issues uh, there whatsoever. Uh, I know that Pattern Keeper is not compatible with Backstitch, um, and that's a bit frustrating, but it is very much compatible with uh, blended colors, so that's awesome. Um, yeah, so basically I downloaded the uh, Golden Kite uh, chart, and um, the way that they provide it, and that's something interesting I think I should mention to you, uh, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, is they actually encrypt uh, the file uh, with a password, which is your uh, email you've used when you were shopping. And on each one of the page sheets, they also add uh, a header with all of your personal information that you've used to check out. So your um, address, your full name, um, and all sorts of that stuff. So when I was printing it out, I did cut it out because <laughs> that is personal information, but that's their way of ensuring that uh, the charts are not being uh, resold or shared around online. Um, and yeah, that's an interesting one. So basically every time I want to open up the file, I have to use up um, the email address I've used for the, uh, for the checkout when I was checking, checking out uh, through the uh, online shop. Um, and even if I already have it on my computer, I still have to re-enter the password every time I want to see something in the chart. And that brings me to something um, that I didn't know about. Um, and the comparison between uh, Markup RX, I think it's the app used for the iPhone devices, and Pattern Keeper, which is available uh, for an Android device. I was very curious about um, what does the Markup uh, RX, I think it's called Markup RX. If not, uh, someone can correct me. Uh, I was curious about it because I've seen people um, show how it's able to detect symbols from pictures and not just PDFs. And I wanted to try it out, so I subscribed for the one year subscription, which was, uh, ooh, I'm in Canada, but I don't remember if I paid US or Canadian. I think I paid Canadian dollars because it was in pounds. So I think I paid 25 Canadian dollars for the one year subscription, which I thought was a little bit on the pricier side. Um, but if it's a good tool, it's a good tool. However, I was not able to open up uh, Golden Kite uh, PDF charts in uh, Markup RX because they were embedded with a password. Um, however, there was no issue with the Pattern Keeper um, popping up a window of confirm the password. And then I was just able to um, drop that password down into uh, that window and everything just loaded it in uh, just fine with Pattern Keeper. So just as a word of caution, I don't know um, what the Markup RX will be able to do in the future, but 
as of right now, which is March 2024, <laughs> I was unable to load uh, Golden Kite files into Markup RX uh, for the iPhone. Why do I have both Android and an iPhone? That's an excellent question. Uh, my husband is an Android user. He's been for ever since he had a phone. Um, and he's one of those people who never get rid gets rid of his old phones. So we have a pile of old Android phones that he no longer, like he no longer uses, but they're basically available and there's nothing wrong with them other than um, battery that drains out really fast. Um, so I was just able to pick up one of his phones and um, that was the best the best use case for an old things that you don't use anymore because I don't need the SIM card for that. I just need an open, like a phone that works. <laughs> it doesn't need to do phone things. It just needs to open up the app. Um, all right, so I have just chatted a lot about the details about the Golden Kite um, and this Project York. If you had any questions about Golden Kite, uh, drop them in the comments because I haven't really seen that many people talk about Golden Kite and the difference between them and um, other full coverage um, charters and I was kind of like curious but also I didn't know what I was getting into <laughs> like I didn't know what it was going to look like and um, nothing, bad about, nothing bad about this it's just kind of sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of a heads up or a warning ahead of time or just have an idea of what to expect so I am going to um, put my phone onto my stand. So I have like a clamp stand right in front of me um, and I'm just going to mount it up there. It is um, like a car car holder that has a, um, a hinge to it. Um, so I'm able to put it on any kind of um, traditional camera tripod. So I just have a C clamp, like you know the ones that roll like this, that has a camera attachment to it. and the phone holder also has a like a camera anyhow it's all compatible <laughs> it looks like it's been rigged up but um it kind of works oh and just let me set up this lamp because that's blocking me i hope i hope it's not uh, making any any of the image uh blown out so i i'm working on the lower right corner right here i actually started uh, at first in the middle if, if you can see this blue blue dot, that's my uh, water soluble marker. And um, then I very quickly realized I'm getting so lost. It just like pulls me in all sorts of directions. So I decided to go down to my trusted way, <laughs> which is the lower right corner um, and started there. But what I've discovered is I don't have all the thread colors available in my DMC stash. Uh, because I'm still building it, I just I didn't buy everything just for the sake of buying it. Like I only buy when I need something. Um, and so a couple of those colors appear here independently, but also in blended uh, symbols as well. So there's a little bit of a speckleness of white in here. And so I'm trying to keep track of which colors I have checked that don't have, like I don't have the thread for them. Um, and it's proving to be a little bit more difficult than I, than I thought. Um, so right now I'm just going to probably poke around a little bit uh, just to try to see if I have something. So 3022, I think I should have 3022. Oh no, it's another color I don't have. Let me just grab a pen so I can, so I can mark it down. Okay, so 30, 22 does not exist, or in my collection does not exist. What about 646? I should definitely have 646. It's a really popular color. There you go. Not only that, I have it on one, two flaws drops, as well as just hanging freely must have used it in a number of projects simultaneously, so that's why I have two floss drops for that. So 
So I'm stitching this project on a 28 count uh, Easy Guide or a Gridded Lugana. I wanted to try 28 count uh, Lugana for full coverages um, because I have seen a lot of floss tubers and people who I uh, kind of follow along with their progress um, that they do uh, full coverages on 20, 28 as well. Did I say 26? No, this is a 28 count Lugana. I must have been thinking about something with the number six. <laughs> um, and uh, so I wanted to try it out, but I was a little bit uh, worried that it's too small for me. So I decided to try to try it on a relatively on a smaller project, and I think this was like the best combination. Mm -hmm. Am I starting here? So this was a a perfect opportunity because it's a much smaller project, um, and if I really dislike it, I don't have to like follow through with it for years. It's just something that I can finish within a couple of months. And um, the only caveat is that I also wanted to try one over one, so one thread of floss. And when I was choosing a project, I didn't really think about blend colors. So blended colors means that you take one thread of one color and then the other thread is just another color, so it makes a blend. Well, that's by its nature means two threads or two strands of thread. So one over one is not going to not going to work. So I ended up settling on that and just doing two over one for this 28 count because of the blends. Where am I going? So size-wise, I definitely feel that it's smaller than a 25, uh, than a 25 count. But in terms of difficulty to stitch, it's not that different. I think because 25 count is already that small that if you're able to do a 25 count, you probably would be able to stitch on a 28 count. The one thing that I have noticed is the weave of the, of the fabric. Because the 28 count is more dense and compact, the thread thickness um, that is used to create that fabric is thinner, uh, which means that it's more difficult for me to, to do a pin, pin stitch for my ending um, than it would have been on a 25 count because the threads are just thinner and I have to be more precise and a bit more diligent in splitting up the thread of the fabric um, to kind of like pin the needle through it. And I think that's the one reason I am not going to continue um, starting projects on a 28 count. Um, I know that it's just a small um, aspect of, of the stitching experience, but for some reason I just, it, it like bothers me <laughs> um, that it takes me so long to try to like pin through it. And I really like my pinning method for my ending of threads um, that it's just, it, it's just kind of like a deal breaker for me, <laughs> uh, if you know what I mean. I think like we all have some kind of preferences to what we, what we like to do and how we like to stitch and we tend to uh, gravitate towards those. And sometimes we can try to do something else for a little bit, but at the end of the day, we, we sort of know what feels comfortable and what feels less comfortable. Um, and it's difficult to trick our brains to do something that feels less comfortable <laughs> for no apparent good reason. I mean, if I really wanted to have something on a 28 count, like really, really badly, I probably would be able to do it. But 25 is already so small that I don't feel like I need to go even smaller. Um, like I, 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 I never feel like, oh, I, I want the the project to appear smaller or yeah so i think like it's a preference it's definitely a preference thing um if i was ending my threads in a different way maybe i would have maybe i would have considered um picking 28 more frequently um so 
you know, we all have our own kind of preferences of how we like to, to stitch and what we like the experience to be. Um, and that's, that's absolutely okay. Um, so as you can see, I'm not sure if you notice, I'm jumping around a lot. And that is one of the hallmarks of this chart. And I know that every chart is different. However, I do think that the majority of Golden Kite charts would be something similar to what I'm experiencing right now, which is confetti, 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 confetti and more confetti. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about this a little bit. Um, right at the beginning of the video, I showed you the specifications. Um, sorry, one, two, and the third. I showed you the specifications of each of those charts. Um, and so think about this. This chart is only 33,000 stitches, so it is probably even smaller than a Heaven and Earth Designs Mini. And yet, it has almost double the number of symbols uh, present in the chart. So 176 colors. Um, which means that among those 30,000 stitches, um, there is a greater variation of color and each symbol appears fewer times and there are more symbols to go in between those symbols um, which results in a very sparse um, like when you're stitching with one color or with one thread you're not doing a lot of block uh, block stitching it's kind of like one stitch here, two stitches there, three stitches here, another two stitches here. Um, and they're kind of like sprinkled <laughs> across the whole entire painting. And I think that has to do with the style of the of the painting. So it's kind of painted and not, um, it's not like a vector art. So those two combinations make this very, it's a very challenging stitch actually. At first I thought, oh, this is moving relatively quickly. I think this is great. Um, so I'm just gonna one, two, one, two. Um, this is going to be so fast and I love it. And uh, this is just uh, perfect difficulty and everything. But then I started stitching more and more and more. And I wouldn't consider my speed to have slowed down, but I just realized how actually difficult this chart is in terms of the amount of counting that I have to do. Because every time I pick up a thread, no matter whether it's a blended color or a regular color, and almost it's irrelevant where it is. Maybe the sky is going to be a bit more blocky, but everything that I pick, you can see it's just like speckles, 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 speckles. And because the blended colors are interwoven um, between the regular, like solid colors, um, you might stitch, let's say I stitched with 646 and then the next color is going to be 646 with another color um, added to it. So it's kind of like you're stitching the same threads with other blends colors, um, but they're not blocks, they're separate colors. Um, which makes it very, I would say like interesting, but also very challenging to stitch because of the never ending, never ending counting. All right, so I'm gonna pick up the next color, which is 30, 21. I have a feeling I don't have that one. I totally do. That's a nice surprise. <laughs> it's always nice when you think you don't have something and then you just check and, and it's there. 30, 21. I might have confused it with um, 3022, which I don't have, and I wouldn't be surprised if it appeared uh, previously um, in this chart. So if you are up for a challenge, <laughs> I would say Golden Kite charts probably would be right up your jam because just because of that. Now, of course, it also um, depends on the artwork because some artworks 
they just have more variability in them and others are a bit more mm, calm i would say like there's like less jumping around so i'm going to start stitching um and then if i remember <laughs> uh, of another thought or idea or um, comment that I had about this uh, about the stitch I'll just share it with you so because this is um, such a difficult well, I find it difficult, okay. Uh, because I find this so difficult, I, for the first time, wrote the grid number on the fabric as well. So I added from one till uh, 15, uh, which is my width and one to 22 for my height. And that's been really, really helpful because as I said, um, because it requires me to jump around so much and when I pick up a single thread, there might be only 200 stitches of that color in the whole entire pattern. Um, and it's a 28 count, so my my threads, they just, they last. They last for a while. Um, and so I start traveling around wherever it takes me, right? Um, but it really is important for me to not accidentally stitch that one, that one stitch in the wrong place. So I gridded it up. Um, sorry, I wrote the numbers for the grid so I can have a kind of like a, a reference reference point just to make sure that if it does take me somewhere where I haven't been before, I'm not putting the stitches in the wrong place and then relying on that for the consequent uh, stitches. It happened to me maybe once, I think, where I accidentally stitched just one block or one, one 10 by 10 over. Um, and then I started basing some other stitches on that. Um, and then that was a little bit of a mess. Uh, fortunately, I caught it relatively early. I think I only had two or three colors uh, laid out at that point. But it's, it's frustrating because then you either have to frog the whole thing or do you just like fudge, fudge things around. Almost made a mistake. Actually, one stitch over in this direction. Now, once I'm done with this uh, stitch with me, um, I'm going to rotate the um, my my work so you can see the back because. I'm, I'm jumping all over the place and by jumping all over the place I mean it I it's just impossible to constantly secure thread in here uh, because you would secure it for a single stitch and then secure it for another single stitch um, so I just kind of accepted that it's going to be bulky and um, 
where am I supposed to be? So there's that long one. I think it's right here. So I just accepted that it's going to be bulky. Um, and that's another one of my sort of like experiments, which is if it's bulky, is it actually bad or it's just okay? <laughs> like, is there something, like, should I be offended by it or not? Um, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, so I'm going to show you the back, the back of the work because yeah, it's some, some serious, some serious carpeting happening there. I've seen um, two stitchers, and their names escape me right now, um, who also stitch on a golden kite. And I think they, they're using um, floss drops that allow you to also use blended color. So it has like two holes in it, and or three holes. So two for the threads and one for the in use thread, which is the combined blend. Um, I haven't noticed the need for that in this project yet, um, because when I'm stitching, like you can see that the whole entire width of the project fits inside of a small nerge. I think this is number two nerge, so not the smallest one, but the second one. Um, and if I pick up a thread with a color, I would probably have a good chance of finishing the thread uh, before I run out of uh, potential stitches to stitch with that uh, with that thread. So I can't really speak speak to that yet. Like, what do I do with threads that are blended? Like, where do I store them as as I'm stitching? Um, I just stitch until I run out of thread, <laughs> and sometimes, um, in spite of me considering myself as a relatively frugal person. With my threads, I think that my mental capacity is more valuable than a little bit of a wasted thread. So sometimes I would waste a little bit of thread if that means that I don't need to think about what to do with it. Because then I can keep on stitching and not waste my brain energy on decision fatigue. Do, do you relate to that? <laughs> I try to pair, like I try to phrase it as legibly as possible. Uh, um, on the third, so one, two, on the third. There are so many problems that you can solve or barriers that you can solve when stitching to make it comfortable. And I think sometimes it's okay to not have everything perfect. I mean, you choose your own battles, right? You choose what you want to, what you want to stand up for and what you think can be left, left alone or can be dealt with later. And that's one of the things that I'm feeling about uh, full coverages is because it's such a complicated project that takes up so much of my mental energy just to just to stitch it that I just want to make my environment as as smooth as possible so I don't think about my setup or I don't think about um, other things that would require my attention and uh, I've been giving so much thought about how to store threads and how to store unfinished threads and threading and rethreading and I thought to myself eventually, like it's been causing me so much, <laughs> so much thought. Um, I'm just gonna not worry about it for now because I, it was just too much stuff to think. And I might revisit that in the future and come up with something and maybe put a pattern on it. <laughs> but <laughs> at the moment, um, I just try to stitch until I run out of thread and the occasion odd time um, I don't run out of thread and I run out of symbols to stitch I just take it easy and waste it <laughs> oh
I think once this area fills and gets filled in, um, and you can actually see what the image, I think it's going to be beautiful. At the moment, there's not much, not much visible. Sounds like someone having a motorcycle time. Well, it's the the hallmark of the spring is coming. People start pulling out their summer transportation methods. I was looking today at uh, uh, bike trailers. So it's like a like you know those little wagons that you can attach to the rear of the bike and you can have kids sitting inside of it. Well, I want to get one um, so we can put our our dog. <laughs> so we can put our dog in it. But hear me out, it's not because she's lazy. She would run. It's just that we go on a 50 to 60 kilometer rides um, and that's just definitely too much for a dog to run. And I kind of don't want to go on a bike ride without her. Um, she's two years old right now. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna pick up a thread and then I'll tell you some of the story or my thoughts about. Um, so we, um, she is two years old and I, I'm an avid cyclist. Like I would cycle in this, in the country for, for hours at a time. Um, I have um, a gravel bike and we have a road bike as well and I would go for anywhere between 25 to 50 60 kilometer rides um, and I used to cycle a lot um, in the country just kind of like on the roads and then we got and then we got our border collie dog so it's been this is going to be our third third summer with her yeah so it's going to be our third summer with her so for the first summer she was way too small and I just cycled in the city and I didn't go on like mega adventures um, then the other summer we were a little bit more busy um, moving into a, a new place and I again didn't cycle in the country for too long so uh, but we still wanted to get one of those um, I think they're called bike trailers um, and there are different ones. There's one that you can just have for kids. Um, and there's ones that are specifically constructed for dogs. Where am I? Here. And um, so this today, I was actually looking online for different uh, for different carriers or different uh, trailers as an options. And uh, because I would love to go on bike rides with my husband, um, but also take her with us because... That, what kind of what kind of a weekend is it for a dog that we spend it by ourselves away from the house and she's stuck in the house like that's just doesn't feel right so <laughs> I want to get one of those uh, trailers that get attached to a bicycle in the back and we can take her along with us um, and so she's not going to be in the scorching sun and her paws are going to be okay and <laughs> she's not going to overdo it um, because a border collie, if you let them do something, they will do it. Um, they don't have a concept of taking care of themselves. Like if you tell them this is a job and you ask them to do it, they're just going to do it. Um, and so we have to be really careful with her, especially in the summer times, um, because she would she needs like enforced enforced uh, break times. So, yeah, if you ever took your dog in one of those bicycle trailers, um, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? How is it working for you? Is your dog like restless on the inside? Because <laughs> that's my concern is that she's going to be uh, so amped up on the inside trying to get out of it um, and not actually enjoying this. That's 
that's what I'm thinking, but maybe she's going to be totally fine. Like, you know, with training, everything is possible. Well, no, not everything, but you're able to, you're able to kind of like provide a positive association uh, for things that they unreasonably scared of. Um, yeah. The only one problem is that we sold our car. So how will we get to the country? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> minor, minor, minor roadblock uh, for my plan, but... <laughs> We've been doing um, car shares and um, renting cars, but you can imagine it's pricey, right? Um, but I think it's more expensive to own a car in the city because you have to pay for parking and you have to maintain it. And then you have to like purchase the car and we're not in the state where we can purchase a vehicle. Um, and purchasing a cheap vehicle doesn't make sense either because that would require a lot of maintenance and Anyhow, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of riding on the bicycle in the city um, because in North America it's very, drivers don't like bikers or cyclists, bikers are more like motorcycles. Um, they don't really like cyclists and there's like not there's beef there's beef between them and so there's always going to be some nicer drivers um, but some drivers are just so unused to cyclists on the road that they don't look out for them um, and the cycling infrastructure is I mean abysmal there's no no appropriate cycling infrastructure um, so I'm don't think that it's a safe thing to do. So I don't. Uh, but I do really like cycling in the country, where it's a little bit more quiet. The roads are a bit wider, um, and the traffic is not as dense. I would really love to visit the Netherlands at some point. Um, because, I mean, they're known for their cycling infrastructure as being the, probably the best in the world. So I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, it must be so nice. Hmm, where do I go next? On the third, just doing a little bit of counting. So, one, two, on the third, and then one down, okay. So let me secure this thread and I'll show you the back of the work. Just so you have an idea of what all of this jumping around does to, to the flip side. Right. 
going to make sure that I have everything here as is. So, I'm sure if you can see my legs, oh yeah, you can probably see because I'm sitting right here. Um, so here's what it is. So you can see it's all over the place. Um, and it's just one stitch here. Like for instance, you can follow this, this line is just a stitch, 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 stitch. And it just kind of like does the zigzaggy thing. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna happen here. So it's like the darker color is just surrounding it. It's probably a lighter blotch, but stuff here and here appears. So there's a lot of this jumping around. But yeah, this is kind of what it's like. So here's the here's the front so far. Um, I managed to put 129 stitches. So I would consider this relatively slow because I was talking to you and thinking and <laughs> trying to kind of like poke things around. But um, yeah, so it's not moving that slow, um, just in general. But it is a lot a lot more concentration that's required. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope that was insightful. If I haven't answered something that you are curious about, uh, golden kite or just stitching blended colors or 28 count, 10 stitch, um, anything that I've covered up but didn't cover up today. Uh, so let me know. I'll be more than happy to, to answer and help you out. Um, and until next time, bye everyone.